Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan. I hope you're doing well today, and I have a review here for a new Goosebumps graphics book, but they actually changed the title to something else, but you can see things like the word graphics right here in the corner. This is a new, not really spinoff, but a new renamed title of Goosebumps the Graphic Novel, and I assume this is going to be the only one we get anytime soon, but I kind of hope otherwise, to be honest with you. This is for The Haunted Mask. It's actually a comic book adaptation in color this time, not black and white, not terrible IDW coloring and whatever and drawings. Uh, this is adapted by Matty Gonzalez, who I don't know at all. I had heard Goosebumps Completionist, my boy, talk about this being pretty good. And I wasn't really sure. I picked it up before I went on vacation to Tennessee, and I cracked it open. I saw some of the art, which is not always at the part of this okay cover. I'm kind of not a big fan of the art style for the book or for this cover because they remind me too much of this terrible Five Nights at Freddy's comic stuff that's been coming out, but that's just me. Uh, I'll get more into that. Here are my thoughts now because I have a lot of positive things to say, just telling you up front. Maddie Gonzalez had the terrible kind of pressure on her, I would say, and her team around her to adapt one of the best Goosebumps books ever, R.L. Stein's Haunted Mask. It's a great book. I love it deeply. I love part two and part four even more. Even part three is pretty good. But the original is really the one that most people seem to love so deeply. It's a great classic tale of Halloween time. A lot of people like myself watch the episode over and over again. It's great. It's a classic. This had a lot on its back. Maddie Gonzal Gonzalez excuse me, had a lot on her back trying to adapt this. And I got to give her props where props are due and the team involved with this. For 150 pages, this is not bad at all. I did not hate this. I, I think there's a little bit of stuff added here and there. Not so much anything changed, just some things added here and there that I really loved about it. It really got me a couple of times. I actually laughed a couple of times. There was a couple of moments before I even get to the plotting of it, because most of you already know the story, that actually hit me in a very sincere, kind of sad way. And I didn't expect that, <laughs> believe me. As someone who's very picky about comic book art, because I love comics, but I have to be into the art to get into a story, to be able to uh, suspend my disbelief or whatever. Um, I have to be very into art to get into a story. It's just, it's very hard for me. There's a lot of series I would like to pick up in comics world and manga world that I just can't get into because of the art, and I avoid it because of that. This is one of those ones I was worried about. And it really, really surprised me. It was a very good recommendation. Definitely better than this piece of crap. <laughs> Just don't read this. Pick up this, though. This was actually very surprisingly good so far. And apparently when you buy it at Barnes & Noble, you get this haunted mask mask. Like, you pop the eyes out and you actually hold it up with this little bookmark-looking thing. I thought this was an, ob an obnoxious bookmark at first. It's not. Just so you know. But I thought that was really cool. Nice little collector's item we'll all be looking for on eBay years down the road. So, for once, Barnes & Noble did something cool. Usually they suck, usually I hate their guts, and usually they don't have anything I'm looking for. But I found that. That was pretty cool. Anyway, The Haunted Mask. Uh, so, for anybody who doesn't know, there's a young girl named Carly Beth in school who gets bullied by two guys. Not really particularly bullied, they just like to scare her, because Carly Beth is a scaredy cat. She gets scared very easily, and this Halloween, she decides she's going to get her revenge. She's going to go to a local haunted, uh, not haunted, but a local, like, mask shop and try to get the scariest mask she possibly can to scare these two guys at school. And eventually, when she does get that mask, which is this creepy-looking thing right here, uh, not so much in the picture, but in the, the book, the one in my head and in the show looks great, um, she goes on kind of a monstrous... Spree. The mask begins to change her a little bit. Carly Beth is a very sweet character in the book and in the original show from Goosebumps. I'm a very big defender, and I think most people are, of Carly Beth and how great the performance was from the little girl who did the original performance of Carly. Um, I was very worried about this. I thought it was going to be bad, <laughs> not just because of the art, but I had opened it up. Let me show you an example. I had opened it up at random points and saw some of this art and immediately was like, this is some Animu-inspired crap. Now, I love manga and I love anime, but too much of it has bled into American culture and the comic industry and have made them worse and worse. You have Spider-Man 
and like Iron Man and stuff, not just being about these heroes and their lives. Half the time, it's not even about them anymore. It's slice of life stories of them eating in a restaurant. And that's usually what it's become. Uh, and I hate it. <laughs> I think most comic book fans hate it, who were fans either before or after the MCU became such a big thing. I hate it. I think all the comic industries have basically dropped the ball there. And when I opened up pages and saw things like this, you know, I was very much rubbed the wrong way, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. But I'd be lying to you, like I said a moment ago, if I didn't tell you the art won me over later on. Because of Carly, it adds a cutesiness to her that makes her more relatable than I think it would have been if we had just had a more darker edged, like the book, like the episode, black and white colored book. I think that would have been great. That would have been more what I wanted. Maybe it was too much for kids. Maybe Scholastic didn't want that. It's a different version of Haunted Mask, but it is freaking good. <laughs> it's good for what it was. I was very positive on this by the end of it. Um, now, I talked about some add-ins. Now, one of the things that I loved about that, there is a particular scene involving the mask shop. There is a joke about one of the masks, and I loved it. It's not in the original book. It's not in the show episodes. It's not in this new terrible 2023 show. It is such a surprisingly good joke that I laughed out loud. And my wife looked over at me in the cabin that we stayed in in Tennessee like I was a maniac because of how much I laughed at this one panel and the joke with it that I thought was so good about what mask was hanging on the wall. It was way too good from what was in here. Then you would see other things like street names and stuff that were really a nice nod to the hardcore Goosebumps fans um, who love Stein, who love Tim Jacobus, who love a lot of these people involved with Goosebumps, references, that kind of stuff. If you love like Universal Monsters, you might see some stuff like that in the background. You might see different horror icons represented in here, whether it be Jason, whether it be other people, whoever. There's a lot of cool stuff referenced in here. Um, the man that owns the mask shop, mask shop, if I remember correctly, I think in the book, I know for a fact in the episodes, uh, he was an old man. I think in the book he was an old man, too. Here he's like a younger Asian guy, probably in his 30s, 40s, uh, wearing the black cape and stuff, which was kind of cool to see that finally here. But I was rooting for Carly. I really liked Carly Beth here. I liked her best friend, Sabrina. I was a little curious what they would do with them, if they would uh, play it straight like the book does. I didn't know what they would do with all of these characters. Uh, Chuck and Steve, the villain bully kids at school. I was curious how they would be handled in the book. I think for the most part, it really gets a lot of passion put into it. Matty Gonzalez did one of the best Goosebumps adaptations ever made with a lot of heart and passion in it. But if you're not an anime manga art style fan, this may not win you over like it eventually won me over. It took some time, but it's a very colorful book for a story that is so dark. One of the darkest Goosebumps books ever. That might not work for everybody, especially if you're one of those people coming back to Goosebumps after so much of your life not being around it for a long time. If you were a 90s kid who loved it back then, you haven't read a book or watched the show in 20 years, if you're coming back around to read this because you love comics, it might let you down. I'm going to be honest with you. I can't preach too much to that. I would love to see some comments down below that could tell me one way or another uh, how you felt about that, if that happens to be you. But this was so surprisingly fun for what it was. It's very dedicated to the original book. Being 150 pages, it's basically almost a word-for-word -word adaptation aside from little pieces of humor thrown in there. My biggest complaint that I have, I personally think The Haunted Mask, the original novel, and Part 2 and Part 4 are incredibly atmospheric. And I think that they deserve to be that scary, that dark, the themes surrounding it about self about love, family, friendship, all of that stuff. There's so many great messages and themes to that book that I don't think are represented as well here because of the cutesy anime style. I understand why Scholastic wanted to make it so colorful and stuff. That, that's fine. I really don't have as much a complaint about that. I don't know how well it suits Haunted Mask, mainly because this villain, the Haunted Mask here, is supposed to be scary. If you've ever seen the original episodes of Part 1 and Part 2, the book adaptations, if you've ever read any of the Haunted Mask books, yeah, they have humor there. Yeah, they have some levity there to make you feel a little bit better, mainly for kids. But it's a, a scary character. It takes over you. It takes over your life. It ruins everything around you. 
Um, and that's not... The, the haunted mask itself, the creature itself, the mask that's evil and can possess you, it's not represented as well here because of how cutesy the art style has to be. That's the only negative I have about it. I think the humor works great. I think the art really uh, was better to me as I read it. Like I said, I prefer a lot of the previous Goosebumps graphics books that had black and white art. You'd usually have two out of the three books adapted in each of those being beautifully drawn and beautifully adapted. Um, one of my favorites being uh, The Scarecrow Walks at Midnight was a great adaptation in my opinion. There's stuff like that that I think done uh, are, are executed overall in adaptation better than this, but Maddie Gonzalez clearly has a love and a respect for The Haunted Mask, and I think that the praise should be given to her for that because she did us fans well. Better than Disney did, better than Scholastic has done for a while, Better than Stein did a lot of the time during the Slappy World days, which is, it might sound insulting to say that because it's the original creator, so on and so on. I love Stein. My whole channel is dedicated to the guy. Don't tell me I don't love him. But this is a really fun, well-done adaptation that I had no faith in <laughs> from the day I saw the cover in some of my friends' groups online, uh, on their community posts, on YouTube or whatever. Had no hope for it. Turned out to be a great read. I had a blast in Tennessee reading this. I could not recommend it more. I really couldn't. If I had to rate the, if you want to just call it Goosebumps, the graphic novel instead of Goosebumps graphics, if I had to rate this adaptation of Haunted Masks, dude, I would easily give this a really high four out of five stars. Really good read. I wish it was darker at times, like the actual novel. I might have wished that the art style was better. But man, this was not bad. This was not bad at all. And it's not just because it's adapting a great story from Goosebumps. It's because it's a good adaptation. You can take a really good book and make a terrible movie out of it, you know? This is one of those cases where you had the right people working on it with actual skill who were maybe given certain things they had to do, like the anime style of the art, and they did it to the best of their ability with actual passion. You can feel that in here. I really do think that. I really stand by that. Uh, one of the best comics I read on my entire vacation. That includes a volume of Berserk. That includes a volume of an H.P. Lovecraft adaptation from his books to a manga. Uh, this was great. I loved it. Anyway, have you read Goosebumps, the graphic novel, The Haunted Mask? What do you think about it? What do you love about the original novel, the original episodes, all of that stuff? Let me know everything down below. But if you have read this, please tell me your thoughts down below. I think we'll all pretty much have the same complaints. But like I said... Really surprising read. Very impressive. <laughs> and to get this cool little thing here was kind of nice. Anyway, thank you all for watching, guys. I'll have a review very soon for House of Shivers number three, Night of the Living Mummy. It might take a day or two. I'm not really sure. Just be patient on that. I'll have some videos out for you for that. And uh, in the meantime, thank you again for being here. God bless you all. Have a great Halloween. It's coming up very soon, like a month away. So, yeah, it'll be here in no time. Uh, thank you all. God bless you again. Catch you later, and goodbye.